Hey there. It's time to go back to the Wii. You know what it is we've been doing here. You know what we've been looking at. The the talks. I was about to say the the clock's ticking, but it started to come out as the talk's clicking. The talk is clicking on on WiiWare and the Virtual Console. As soon, you will no longer be able to add funds to buy the variety of games that have been made available on this service over the years. Uh, But we're taking a look at what we can while we can. And we do have four more games to take a look at this week. We're going to start with what's over here in the lower corner I hope everyone 10 plus likes violence because that's what we're getting with Lit by Way Forward. So, sort of a horror themed puzzle game. Now, kind of an odd thing. Lit, you'll see this game on other platforms. This was ported to mobile, and then the mobile version of the game was ported to PC. So you can look this game up on Steam. You'll find it. It's there. The strange thing is that it's not really the same game as the WiiWare version. Uh, The mobile version, it looked like they changed the graphics to simple 2D graphics as opposed to what this has. And that means that the PC version also has those simple 2D graphics. As far as I know, WiiWare was the only platform that this version of Lit came out on. So we're going to take a look at this. I don't know why the WiiWare version wasn't the one that was ported to PC. It seems kind of odd. Oh, I don't have a nunchuck attached. That's right. I got to put that on. Click that in and get this going. All right, got to select a file, but there's nothing on the screen. Well, I use the Wiimote. I use the Wiimote to see what's here. Game does use some motion controls. I mean, maybe that's why it wasn't ported to PC. You could use the mouse though. Anyway, let's not think about that. Let's just think about what we have here with Lit on the Wii. And we're gonna start a new game. Nope, that's... Nope, that's not, not, no. Let's exit the main menu. I accidentally picked the name above New Game, Jake 105, because they are motion controls. I'm using the pointer, and you know that, uh, kind of easy to make mistakes when it comes to motion controls. We're going to pick New Game. All right, premise of the game. We're in this dark classroom. We need to put on the light. There's a lamp right here. Hold on, I'm going to take a look at it. Use my pointer to look at the lamp. I'm going to turn that on. Why do I need to turn the light on, though? What happens if I walk into the darkness? Well, that's what happens. We get dragged into the darkness by hands that are way too grabby. We got to avoid the grabby hands by turning on all the light. Now, I do have, have a flashlight. Now I can use the flashlight to see what's in the rest of the room, but I can't actually walk out there. The flashlight will not protect me from hands. I do want to pick up items, though. I got a slingshot pellet. I got a second slingshot pellet. What do I do with these? Well, I do have a slingshot. And I can aim it. What would I shoot in the room, though? Well... The obvious thing is this window. It is lit up. And there we go. We made a path of light. Another pellet. I mean, that doesn't seem like much, but we need to break as many windows as we can, don't we? Shed up, shed as much light as we can in this room. Turn this lamp on. There we go. And what, what are we? He- what do we have here? I mean, I can go to first person mode, and I can see that I'm by the exit door. That's not first-person mode. That's still third-person mode. It's just over the shoulder. Anyway, doesn't matter. What matters is here's the exit. We're going to go through. We made it out of the classroom. We did it. Except we're in another classroom now. So, you get the idea. This is basically how the game goes. 
we find these sling. It's a good thing that this this school is riddled with slingshot pellets. Because we're gonna need a lot of them. Alright, so we broke that. But it doesn't seem like there's anything over here. What happens if we just look around? Oh, there's an item right there. It's a lamp. And that lets us get to the PC. Which lets us turn on these other PCs and lets us get to the door. And we're out of here. Once again, let's turn the lamp on. Let's pick up pick up our pellets. Oh, the phone's ringing. I see a phone over there. How do I get over there? Well, there's a window right in front of us. I picked up a TV remote. Where's the TV, though? Well, you can turn it on and find out. It's right there. That lets us get to the phone. Oh, hold on. The, Wii the Wiimote's going. Jake, it's Rachel. Oh my god, I can't believe you're alive. What is going on? The entire school is dark, and these things are crawling all over the place. Crazy, huh? Come and find me. We need to get out of here. Alright, you hear that? I put the Wiimote up to the microphone, so hopefully you heard that. So we got a phone call from another student, one of our friends, I guess. She doesn't know what's going on. We gotta get out of here. Hopefully we can meet up with her as we continue on. Got another pellet. Well, if we got another pellet, there is a window right here. Nothing here, though. But I can use the TV remote to turn on another TV. And yet another over there. And another over there. So let's see. We can stand here. And then here. And then out we go. So why is darkness infested the school? We don't know. Only one window to try here. So this is... It looks like a lamp... No, a fan. But it's actually an oscillating lamp, I guess. We can go out here, but... I mean, it's gonna pull back. But it, we did see... Another one right there, so we can use this first one to run out here. Turn that on. And then this on. And out we go. Now this one, it looks like that the challenge has gone up a bit because we walk in here and we're surrounded by windows. I heard a phone going. It looks like there's a phone over there. Well, let's see what we can do. All right, so we have one pellet and we have all kinds of windows around us. So which one would we want to get? Well, we would first have to decide, if we break one, which one would give us a path that we can take. So, like, most of these ones on the side walls would be disqualified. We probably just want the one that's right in front of us, right? That seems like that would make sense. And that gives us a pellet. We could break this window over here, and it would make a path to the... to the phone. Well, there is a box with a pellet right there, but it looks like the table's gonna block us. Still, if we get an, a new pellet, that's probably a good thing. So let's do this. All right. So which one do we want to do after that? Well, this one could give us a path. It's kind of hard to tell from here, though. It looks like there's a desk right in front of us, though, so... Oh, hold on. I'm going to be out of flashlight power, which means I need to shake the remote. Shake it to get that flashlight power back. 
It looks like there's a desk right in front of us, so that would block us from getting that. But behind us, there's another pellet, so maybe we want to break this one anyway. Let's, well, let's just get this. All right, but we can't go up there. So which one do we want to break next? Well, there's one over here, but we wouldn't be able to get to it from here. One over here but we wouldn't be able to get to that path from where we're standing. There's over here. Maybe we want to break that. It looks like that should work. What about down here? Like if I were to break this, that could work. Oh, shake this again. Shake, shake, shake. And what about over here? Well, it looks like that one would lead to some desks, so that wouldn't work. All right, so, oh, I should say that this one wouldn't work because I can't get up there, which would let me walk in that path. So it looks like that the only option available to us is this one. Okay, we got another pellet. Uh, so do we want to do this one now? It looks like we do. This also brings us to the phone, but, well, we can't pick it up. I guess no one's calling anymore. Did we miss it? Could we have gotten that if we had been here earlier? I don't know. Nothing down there, it seems. All right, what do we want to do from here? Well, I could do that, and that would, yeah, there is a pellet right in front of me if I do that. So it seems like this is probably the one. But... Shake, shake, shake. We got a TV remote. Where is that TV? It's right there by the exit. It's the only one that's in the room, though. But that's a problem, isn't it? Because I did not pick up another uh, pellet. I didn't. I can't use my slingshot because I did not pick up another pellet. And if I did not pick up another pellet, well, I can't get over there. Doesn't seem like there's anything else that's available for me to do. So it might be that I just messed myself up. And if that if we messed ourselves up, if we have no more ammo, well that's the only thing we can do, right? We just have to restart. was this first, then, what was I saying, this one second, it's important that we're able to get a new pellet every time we break a window, otherwise we're not going to be able to do anything in, for the next window, alright, there's that, and then I wanted to do this, did I want to do this? Will that get me anything if I do that? Not yet, not yet. Um, right, it was this one. Oh, the phone icon appeared like for a, an instant, but it's not there anymore. Alright, so I got this slingshot pellet. Now, the one I did was that. It let me get the TV remote, but that did not turn out so well because I needed another pellet. See, I could break that, or I could break that. Let's give this one a try. Alright, it looks like that was the way to go because now I have this pellet. Uh, and from here, I could... Uh, let's see. There it is. Break this one. That gives me another pellet. Let's so go down here. And break the last window. Now let me get the TV remote. And I turn the TV on. Run over here. And out we go. So that one was more complicated than the rooms we've just been doing. Well, 
Uh oh, we got a scary ghost girl. Scary ghost girl in the classroom. What happens if we shoot her? I mean, that's what you do with ghosts, right? You shoot them with your, with a slingshot, and that'll take care of the problem. Did, okay, I missed. Okay, no, but I got her with my flashlight. She doesn't like the flashlight. And she really doesn't like the flashlight. All right, so don't get her attention. We were able to do damage, but it ended up with us dying. All right, we have one slingshot pellet. Which window do we do? It seems like the only option is the lower right. What does that get us? Gets us another pellet. From here, it looks like the only option is the one on the top wall. That gets us another pellet. All right. Two windows up here. Let's see. Well, I won't be able to reach the path that either of them makes, will I? So I could do this one or the one above it. The one above it will hit her. Maybe I should try that. Yeah, that did damage. So I'm not really sure what it is she did there. It looks like that she just killed the sunlight. Or moonlight? Oh, that hurt her as well. Got a combo on light. She's not happy about it. Alright, well... I don't have any more ammo. Hmm. Oh, there's a computer over there. Yeah, but I, I die if I try to get to it. Because it is in the darkness. Okay. So maybe that window was the wrong one. That last one I did. Let's do this. Let's go over here. Get this around here. Aim at that. Shoot that. Get this. Okay, let's try the other window. Shoot that. Does that help me? It doesn't really seem like it. Like, there's a computer right there. Oh, I didn't actually mean to hit her with that. Attempting to attack her again with the flashlight does not work, as you can see. Hmm. All right. Let me look all around the room. No, there are no additional windows anywhere. Now, we know computers can make light, so if I was able to turn that on, it seems like that would... that would be good. Right, so, those two have to be correct, the windows I just did, because I got an additional pellet for doing either one of those. When I did one of these windows, however, uh, it did not lead to me getting an additional pellet, unfortunately. Just gonna look around a bit more. I'm not able to like walk over the table or go under the table, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, there's a lamp right there, but I can't get to it. There's another pellet right there, but I can't get to it. Make sure I don't hit her with the flashlight. I'm gonna shake it up to get more, more light. All right, so if I break that window, the path goes over to her and hurts her. She goes over there, takes out that light. She then goes back here, gets hurt, takes out this light. Probably don't want to do that yet, because the more light I have, the better. I hit this one, and, well, it didn't actually help me out here. Um, let's see, is there anything? Oh, hold on. You see that? There was an item right next to me the whole time, and I didn't see it. Well, there's a TV remote. There's also a computer right here. Uh-huh. Uh, but these have timers, it seems. Because that... Yeah, that went out. Does it go back on? Oh, no, it did, it did go back on. On its own. All right, I also have the TV remote. Okay, that hurt her. She doesn't like that. All right. She's going to go back to her position. Now break this. Doesn't like that. She's gonna get hit again. Let's 
She's going to go back to the chalkboard. And she, she only has a very little amount of health left. Should be enough that we can just do this. We did it. We killed the ghost girl. And we continue on walking through the School of Darkness. But that's probably enough for Lit for right now. You know, it's it's an interesting little puzzle game. And you know that I like horror. I like horror-themed games. So that's kind of interesting. I just wanted to show this because, like I said, while you can play Lit on other platforms, it seems like the other platforms are the mobile version. And WiiWare is the only one that actually has this one for some reason. I don't know, maybe they redid the games so it wouldn't involve motion controls. I'm not sure. But uh, that's available on WiiWare, and this version only on WiiWare. Next up... Monsteca Coral. It's for everyone! Everyone can enjoy this weird game. I don't know what to say about it. I'm not even really sure how to describe the game. Uh, you'll see. You'll see what it is. I believe that this is exclusive to WiiWare as well. I don't think this was ported to anything else. Um, and I'm not really sure what to say about it. But you'll be able to make your own judgment on what this is. We're going to start a new game. He's the maker. The Monstek is the world. He needs our help. We have to guide the Stompies. Yes, they're called that. To their summer grazing grounds in Fung Tree Forest. That's a Stompy. He's only a baby Stompy. Biguana will help. There's Biguana. He wants to do this thing. We have to view the Stompies. I'm going to zoom in on the Stompies. I am a voyeur who observes everything the Stompies do. And also go out. There we go. We can do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The world revolves around the Stompies. Yep, that's all. Now, how do we play the game? Well, we need to get the Stompies to move to places. So we want them to go to this building. I'm going to, like, put a flag right there. Stomp. There they go. You see them going. They're heading there. They did it, and they destroyed the building. <laughs> but what if we wanted the Stompies to get there without getting wet? Well, we have to be very careful as we guide our Stompies. I need to move them around the lake. And up here, to the building. And now they'll destroy it. I mean, I guess that's why they're called Stompies. And we bump into... Stompies bump into one another, then they become part of the herd. Alright, I have... I have I'm controlling a Stompy. I need to find the other Stompies. Here's one over here. So I'm just gonna have the Stompies run at each other, and into each other. So... They, they group up. They form a Stompy Posse. Stompies are more powerful in numbers. And we got all of them. Maybe we want them to spread out. So I can do this. And double tap. There we go. Double tap and hold B. So we're going to go on to the next tutorial. We can make them jump. Let's see. Down and forward. There he went. He jumped. What about up and back? Uh. Nope, that wasn't quite right. Nope, that's... Why is it going to the right like that? There we go. Now he's in the leg. What about the left? Yeah, he can do, he can do that. What about the reverse? Uh, to the right. No, that's not... Th no? To the right. No, why is he going that way? There we go. To the right. We can throw Stompies in any direction. Make them do little hops if you want. All right, let's uh, let's just move on. Uh, what do Stompies do? Well, of course, they collect bubbles of swamp gas. What else would they do? We're gonna get these bubbles. Okay, where's my Stompy? Where's my Stompies at? So here's one, and I can make them gather bubbles. This is what they do with their lives. I mean, Stompies are pretty simple. They don't have too much in the way of of, of goals or ambitions. They just want to collect st swamp gas. But why do they want to collect that swamp gas? Hold on, let me change the camera. 
Maybe we'll find out why this is important to them. He's floating! You picked up too much gas, but I can flick the Wiimote to do this. I'm doing it. There we go. Alright, so the more of them together, the more gas they can absorb. Alright. Got my herd. Gonna get the, the bubbles. As swampies do. As stompies do, I should say. Called them swampies. They could be called that because they want swamp gas so much. So basically, you know, we, we, we control the stompies and we have them run around an island and collect the bubbles. That's sort of how this goes. Uh, where are some bubbles? Oh, there are bubbles. You might notice there's like a worm meter in the lower left. And you know, we'll find out what that's about. Let's have them go this way. The Astro Maggot! Here it is! We have to feed- this is why we need the gas, is because it's needed to feed the Astro Maggot. The Astro Maggot starts out very small. But maybe if we feed it, it'll become a big grown-up Astro Maggot. There it is, it's getting bigger. Let's inflate that Astro Maggot. You know that's what you like. I know about you. I've seen what you have on your Tumblr. Well, it's had enough, but can the Astro Maggot truly have enough? The Astro Maggot will pulse when it is ready for more gas. And of course, we all know if you want gas quickly, you have to destroy robots' buildings. Let's do that. Alright. There's the building, there are my stompies. Put a flag there. And let's see them destroy the building. Destroy it, please. There you go. Smash that building. Display your stompy pride. Yep. What else would the building contain but swamp gas? We can help him out, apparently. Alright, let's destroy these buildings. Uh, well, first let me get these gas bubbles. Oh, some of them are floating. I didn't really mean to do that. Yeah, there we go. I wanted them to lose some gas. Uh, okay, everyone get together. Is the Astro Maggot around? Because we kind of have a lot of gas, and it would be good if we could feed the Maggot. Well, where are those buildings at? I guess we could destroy the buildings, despite that. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. It, the Astro Maggot is breaching over here. That's right. Take that gas. Take it all. Lord Astro Maggot. You give us our purpose in life, Astro Maggot. It is you, because it is for you that we destroy the buildings built by the robots and collect the gas. Destroy the robot residences. So it's sort of like the opposite of Into the Breach. You know, we are the, the, the monstrosities created by nature, and we are here to destroy the, the structures built by technology Re to reclaim the Earth and make the robots angry. It is all for the purpose of feeding the Astro Maggot. Oh, that one's going away. Astro Maggot, here it is, right here. Oh, it's so full, but not full enough. Not full enough. We have to fill it to bursting. The Astro Maggot is, is beautiful in its disgustingness. I like how the objective text is just, like, right there on screen. Just really big. 
that's how the Stompies live. That's how they live their lives. They know that everything they do, everything they do in their daily lives is just for the sake of feeding the Astro Maggot. So we're seeing things from the Stompies point of view. Let's see, it's over there. Let's feed it some gas. Oh, it is so ripe and turgid with gas. It's so bloated, and that means it's happy. Okay, we can now completely fill it. All right, so it went back into the ground, so we're going to have to wait for it to come back out. Where is it? Come on. Come on. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. There it is. All right, it's full. What does that mean? What could it mean? Oh, right? It could fly away now. Yes, yes, this is what we this is what we've been living for. Uh, hold on, where is it? Where is it? Has it appeared? It's going to it's going to leave. It's going to leave the island and we have to be on it. There it is. Lord Astro Maggot, do not leave without us. Oh yeah, we're sticking to it. We're sticking to it. Uh, not all of the Stompies have stuck to it. Not all of them have. Oh no, a couple of them are being left behind. No, Lord <laughs> Astro Maggot, please. Haven't we served you? Haven't we pleased you? Do not leave us behind. Let's see if we can get up on this mountain and get to it as it's going over. I don't know. I, I don't think it's working. I mean, most of our Stompies have gotten on it, but I don't think all of us have. No, there are three that have been left behind. I can't get a better camera angle on the Astro Maggot than this. I know, I missed it. Let's see if we can do it again. Uh, okay, so all of us are back. This is the important part. We need to make sure... There it is. We need to make sure that we can get all of our stompies on the, on the maggot. Because this is, you know, this is them going to the promised land. We did it! Gather your herd. Collect bubbles. Feed the astro maggot. Jump on its back. That's life. That's just life right there. You can't get realer than that. Anyway, now we're actually playing the game. This is the first level. It's a very simple level. It's just flat ground. There's like a pond. We need to collect our stompies, get our stompies together, because, you know, we've been living a carefree, carefree life during our childhood, but it's time to grow up. It's time to realize what it means to be a real stompy. An adult stompy, uh, it means that it's time to get together, work together, amass the gas, feed the maggot, and then leave. Head off to the promised land. It's an allegory for religion, you see, this this game. We're all together now. Let's get some gas. Gas all over the island. Just gonna have to run around to pick it all up. The music is this kind of weird MIDI music kind of an odd sound, like I'm playing a PC game in the 90s using a wavetable sound card. Boop. 
it may seem like the Stompies have sort of a, a pointless life where they don't do a whole lot, where they lie around until it's time to collect gas, and all they're doing with this gas is you're just giving it to the maggot. They serve the maggot. But, I mean, it's really not too different from the way rest, the rest of us live our lives. You know, we, we spend most of our time working a job for, you know, that, that we're not interested in for people who we're not interested in. And, you know, society tells us that's what we're supposed to do. That that's what it means to be an adult. Being an adult means, you know, using the time, most of the time of your life, to serve other people, to serve the astro maggot. Even if they might not look like a maggot, they might look like a human being. No, they're actually an oversized maggot, filled to bursting with gas. And you do what you can to do the best job you can, hoping that you'll be rewarded eventually by giving, being given the opportunity to, to jump on its back as it goes off to the promised land. Because, you know, the better of a job you did, the more hard work you did, you're going to get rewarded for that eventually, right? That's what that's just capitalism. That's just capitalism right there. But it might be that even if you did a good job, even if you you spent all your life dedicating it to the company, it might just end up being that when the Astro Maggot finally flies away, maybe you're one of the ones left behind. And you just think, what about me? What about all that time I spent working for you? And, you know, they... It's not that they really care. I'm sure they'll, they'll pretend that they care. That's what they tell you, you know, to be a good manager. But when it comes down to it... And it's time for them to leave the island. You know, don't think for a second they're looking out for you. However, this time round, we did it. This time round, it worked out well for everyone, for all the Stompies. By working together, we were all able to get off the ground. We were able to get airborne. Who knows where we're going? Who knows if we'll be happy where we're going to? But you have to put a certain amount of faith in the system. That if you put your time in, that you, you work hard, you be a good citizen, that the system will look out for you. And you hope it's true. You suspect that it isn't, but you hope it's true. That's probably enough of Monsteca Coral. Again, it's just a really, really weird game available on WiiWare. And I believe it is only available on WiiWare. I assume that it gets more, it gets complicated and it gets harder as it goes on. Like, there were no robot buildings. We did not fight any robots, and I can only assume that eventually that would happen. But that did not happen in the levels we played. Now, what's happening next is I'm going to have to change some options here, some uh, some config options. As we go on to the next game, I'm going to have to go to screen, go to widescreen, and then I'm going to change it to 4x3. Why am I doing that? Well, because our next game is in 4x3. It's also weird in that the next game we're playing, Blaster Master Overdrive, is like the it's the only Wii game I've played that forces an output of 480i. Every Wii game is 480p. That's just the standard. This one's interlaced. It's 480i. I have no idea why that would be the case, but it is. So I'm going to start... And the Wii will change its video mode to 480i. So we'll get like, yeah, that little flash that we got right there. Yeah, there we go. And now it looks all wrong. You know, that doesn't look right. That looks way zoomed in. It's because the settings I have on my Frame Meister are for the Wii in 480p. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, I'm going to go to settings 
on this, and I'm going to load up a profile that I made for Wii at 480i, or specifically for this game. And this should look okay. There it is. Blaster Master Overdrive. So, this is an odd game in that, again, it's 4x3, it's 480i, it requires you to play the game with the Wiimote sideways, but does not let you use the classic controller. It does not have support for the classic controller for some reason. So, weird things about this game all around. You may recognize the name Blaster Master. Uh, it's a long-running series, though you don't get games in this series very often. The last one that came out was, I believe, Blaster Master Zero, which seemed to be, it seemed like people had positive opinions of it. We'll see what this one's like. Well, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to press the one button to go to new game. And we're going to get a story. The story is a lot more intense than the NES game. The world has been overtaken by a virus. You might remember that the story in the NES game was a kid, uh, a kid's pet frog jumped down a hole in the backyard and the kid jumped over after him and had to rescue the frog from the radioactive monsters. This, this time round, uh, aliens invaded. Humanity has been put to sleep. We're on the brink of extinction. So the, the stakes have been raised in Blaster Master Overdrive. Now I know that that frog thing was not the story of the Japanese version of the game, which I think was called Meta Fight, but that story was made up entirely for the Western version. But Sophia remains the same. Sophia was the armored vehicle from the original game. And we have to use it to save humanity or die trying. Alright, here we go. It plays like Blaster Master. We have this tank that can jump and can shoot. And we have to travel across this world in a, a rather Metroidvania-ish kind of way to defeat the aliens. And that was the way the Bla original Blaster Master was as well. Like, you can, you know, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. You can see the map. It's a very familiar-looking map. It's a sort of game that you would, sort of, map you would get in a Metroid game or a Castlevania game post-Symphony of the Night. And we can also get out of our car like that. And we're much, we're a lot weaker when we're outside of our car, but we have to be outside of the car to go into the levels like this. All right, now we got some overhead levels like this. I can shoot my gun. Save points. I have different weapons. Like I have the normal gun, but then I can change to uh, like this bubble weapon. Which seems weaker. But I can I can power up my guns like that. I can also hold down the trigger on the Wii Mote so I can lock in my viewpoint. Instead of, you know, just looking around wherever, I can lock it in so I can aim in the same direction. Which is kinda neat. Let's see. My third weapon is the grenade, which was also in the NES game. It's much more powerful than the gun, but it's kind of unwieldy to use. It's short range and only affects that, that spot in front of me. You may notice when I'm picking up uh, icons that say P, that allows me to power up my gun, which again was in the NES version of the game. You could power up your normal gun. You could not power up your grenades, but in this version you can power up all three of your weapons, it seems. But if you take damage, you lose that power. Which, why in the NES game, it was always kind of difficult to hold on to your gun power. Because uh, you would get hit, you would lose it. So you ended up not really having a powered-up gun for most of the game. That's kind of how it went. Oh, I didn't save, did I? I might as well save. Nope, I didn't save there either. There we go. Nope, I didn't save there either. There we go. Mm. 
So I really like the original Blaster Master. Uh, that, I think, holds up as one of the best NES games. Though the sequels never ended up being quite as good. There was Blaster Master Boy on the Gen uh, no on the Game Boy, which was okay. Uh, not nearly as good as the NES game. There was Blaster Master 2 on the Genesis, which I never played, but people said was just people said that game was just flat out bad. Doesn't seem like I can jump up there. There was Blaster Master Returns on the PlayStation 1, I think, which wasn't bad, but really wasn't as good as the NES game. I haven't played Blaster Master Zero, but again, people seem to like it. Maybe I should give that a try at some point. And this game doesn't seem bad. I'm having a good, a pretty good time with it. Jump! I can't shoot through that, so I assume that I'll need to get a powered-up weapon in order to shoot through, through those blocks. Oh, and I should mention that as we go in these things, most of them will not have, like, a boss or anything at the end of them. Oh, hold on. See, the problem with using the grenade is something like that. Let me just use my normal gun. Yeah, most of these little caves will just have power-ups like gun power or HP power-up. But if you find the right one, then you'll find the actual boss of the level. And that was something of a time sink in the original game. If you didn't know where the boss was, you would end up going in all these caves, not knowing where you had to go. But then, you know, once you actually knew where to go, the game became a lot faster because you would just completely skip all those other caves. No reason to go in there. Unless you wanted to get the gun power, but like I said, it was very easy to lose that gun power. See, I just got hit right there. But fortunately, my normal gun uh, was only on level one, so I didn't lose any gun power. Hey, more gun power. Let's go to my grenade. Now I have level three grenade. Doesn't seem to be changing the actual shot of it. But uh, maybe it's more powerful now. Oh, and the number three is gold, so maybe that's the maximum power up? Maybe it's three per weapon? Could be. And the music so far has been a remix of Level 1 from Blaster Master. Which is good. I like the Blaster Master soundtrack. So, I believe that this game is exclusive to WiiWare. I don't think this came out on anything else. So once again, this is yet another game that will become unavailable. Once the Wii Shop is gone. And... I don't know who would have the rights to re-release it. I saw at the beginning of the game, it said Sunsaw. Are they still around? I mean, Blaster Master Zero came out, so there must be some company that is able to release games that have this IP. There must be something. Oop, let me get that. But uh, as it is, I mean, what are the chances of this ever coming out on anything else? Seems kind of low. All right, let me, uh, let me get out of here and go in here. Try out my powered up grenade. So, yeah, before I called this game a Metroidvania, which thinking about it seems kind of weird since this game, uh, well, it, it did, Blaster Master 1 didn't come out before a Metroid 1. But it certainly came out long before 
uh, the term Metroidvania was around. So it does feel weird to use the term in relation to, to Blaster Master. What do I want to power up? Well, I already have level 2 in my bubbles, so maybe I should do that. I can fire three bubbles at once. All right, the bubbles home a little bit, if I have a lot of, lot of space. It's still kind of weak, though, but I guess that's to be expected, considering it's a homing weapon. that? I got a bomb, I guess. seems to be all that's in there. There is another one up there, to the upper right. So let's head on over and see if we can find a way in there. I don't think I can make that jump, so let's go down. Controlling the tank does feel a little awkward. Like, it doesn't feel like... It feels like I'm controlling a heavy vehicle. It doesn't feel like Mario or anything. But, I mean, that's appropriate. Right. hit, and my bubbles went down to two. Also don't have much health left. I'm not sure how to use that bomb. I should probably figure that out. We'll take a look at that. But I should probably figure out how I'm supposed to use the bomb, because I don't know which button does that. I feel like I've used all the buttons. Probably just change to my normal gun. That seems to be stronger than the homing thing anyway. Yeah, definitely stronger. And there's absolutely nothing down here. 
All right, we'll go take a look at this over here. So, besides that the first boss they're gonna give to us is probably the most annoying boss, at least I thought it was, from the first game, which is the giant crab. Now, my grenades are strong, but actually trying to get in close would probably result in me getting hit. Let's see if I can use the, the bomb. How do I use this? Some pressing buttons. Oh, there it was. Press uh, one and two together. Activates the bomb. Right. Let me go to my grenades. See if I can do anything with this. All right, there we go. hit, my grenades went down to two. There it is. And what do I get from that? Anchor Kit 1. Thumbs up for that. Thumbs up for Anchor Kit 1. And what does that do? Alright, it looks like, yep, my car has a grappling hook. So that's basically the progression of this game. You, you know, drive around these levels, we go into these caves, eventually we fight a boss. By defeating the boss, we get a power-up for our vehicle. In this case, it is this grappling hook. Usually the power-up will involve uh, increased mobility to let you go places that you couldn't before. So that's what we would be able to now do with our grappling hook is, whoops, we would be able to go to somewhere that I wasn't able to go before and go there. So, whoops, I'm not a bad at using it right now, but that's like what the idea of using this would be. can also use it as a weapon. The ceiling seems to be too high. I cannot hit- there we go. There, that's how you would use it. That's- okay, there's nothing here. So forget about it. But that's basically the idea, is that I would now use my power-up to be able to get places I wasn't able to get to before, and I would be able to go all around this map and find the things? Find all of the bosses and all the power-ups, eventually get to a last boss, is basically how this would go. But as for right now, that's probably enough for Blaster Master Overdrive. I, th I think it seems pretty good. Um, I mean, again... With the existence of Blaster Master Zero, I don't know how relevant this game would be because Blaster Master Zero seems to be like more, it seems to be if someone wanted a new Blaster Master, that would be the game they played. And it seems like that overshadows Overdrive here. So, but it's still the case that Overdrive was, I believe, a WiiWare exclusive. Once the store goes down, it will no longer be possible to get this. So if you like Blaster Master, if you're a fan of that and you want more of it, 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 there is a game on here that is exactly that and it's soon it will no longer be available so we're gonna go to the Wii menu and then the Wii will go back to 480p which will make it look weird so I'm going to need to load up my 480p profile again because once again I have no idea why Blaster Master would force in a 480i resolution that makes no sense What I don't think any other game does that it's such a weird thing. All right, and from there, let's see. Yeah, put that in four by three. 
I'm going to now connect the classic controller because it's time to look at a virtual console game. That is Do Re Mi Fantasy, Mylon's Doki Doki Adventure by Hudson Soft. So this is a Super Nintendo game, rather a Super, Super Famicom game. Never came out in the West. It was Japan exclusive, but it got a release on the Western, uh, I was about to say visual console, virtual console. It's what it is. And I think this was the only Western release that it got. I thought this was a weird thing because this is a sequel to Mylon's Secret Castle on the NES, if you remember that game. A lot of people don't like that game. I actually do like that game. Uh, I played it quite a bit when I was a kid, and I do still like it, even though it's I know, you know not the greatest game, but I do like it. This is actually a sequel to that, but it plays completely differently. So we're going to load this up and see what Mylon was getting himself up to on the Super Nintendo. Yep, got the classic controller. This was almost a decade after the original Mylon Secret Castle was released. I just found it weird because Mylon is not exactly a relevant IP, even at this time when this came out. Here we go. We're playing it. And like I said, did not get a Western release. So no, this is not in English. Uh, this is still all in Japanese. But we are going to get a story. Follow along, if you can. All right, you get all that? Mylon was living his happy forest life with his happy forest friends. Then his fairy friend was kidnapped by the devil, I guess. And now Mylon is pissed and is going to go kick some devil ass, telling his parents about what he's up to before he goes. He's going to say, Mom, Dad, I'm off to kill the devil. Um, so I won't need dinner tonight. And I guess, I guess his, his parents are okay with it. You know, it, there comes a time in every young forest boy's life when he goes off to murder the devil to rescue his fairy friend. What about springs? In the forest you will find springs, and then they will let you do this. There, there will be wind. The weather does exist in the forest. So those are the two tips that his parents had to share with him before he left. I mean, it's not a whole lot, Mom and Dad. I would figure you would have had amassed more wisdom than that in your years, but I guess not. All right, here we go. We can run, jump, shoot bubbles, and that's about it. We collect musical notes and destroy blocks to get new clothes. The clothes represent our hit points. We can put these in bubbles. There we go. We can murder monsters by trapping them in bubbles, and then they float away into the sky where they will suffocate in the in the, ion the ionosphere. Uh, Mylon is hardcore like that. We can also bounce off of monsters to get musical notes, but I failed to do so right there. Doesn't mean he can't. It just means I wasn't able to do it. I got a bowling ball. There we go. Die, forest monsters. You're all complicit in the kidnapping of the fairy friend. You all deserve death, if not more. Here's a spring. Ah, uh, There we go. We just ran through those monsters with Mylon's rage. His righteous rage. 
so yeah, we're not traveling around a castle like in the original game, but rather we're walking through a forest in these small stages. There's a map. We have to get to the other side of the map. Look at this guy. He's like, you know, just minding his own business. Mmm, someone's standing on me. I'm sorry. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we'll leave him alone. I wouldn't like it if someone used my head as a stepping stone either. So I'm not gonna, I can't, I'm not gonna blame him for anything. Got a power up, it seems. Did it increase the speed of my bubbles? Possibly. No one's pleased about this. So I suppose as Mylon continues his adventure, he's working his way over to the castle of the devil. Because where else would he be going? All right, green clothes represents our maximum hit points. If you're wearing green, you're in the clean. Whereas if you're wearing red, then watch out, Fred. That's how you remember what the colors mean. Oh. Oh, I, I got saved! Because I picked up the bubble gum. So if I fall in a pit, but I had picked up bubble gum before bubble gum beforehand. I don't have a bubble gun. I do have a bubble gun. I have it's not a gun, but I spit. It's not really a gun. But if I have the bubble gum, then it will save me from dying from pits. I was going to try to, like, bounce off of him, but the pit was too wide, I think. I shouldn't try to do that. There's, like, a robot man on the, on the right side of this map. I assume he's the boss. He doesn't seem very pleased. He seems angry. So I don't know what his deal is. But Mylon is not going to let that robot man stand in his way. He is a, a fairy friend to rescue... Everyone better get out of Mylon's way. He may look cute, but he is dangerous. He has murderous intent in his eyes. I mean, Mylon is someone who did, like, defeat an entire castle full of monsters and defeated an evil sorcerer in the first game. So, I mean, like, these, these forest creatures should take him seriously. It's quite an accomplishment. It's like a big spring over there. Oh, hold on, I can get in here. So, like, I guess these walls that look like honeycombs represent possible secret entrances. Uh, but I don't... I'm not finding one right here, though. I don't have to shoot or anything to get in there. It's just a wall I can walk through. Whoops. Yeah, I know. Sorry, Mylon. So when I jump off that platform, it will go back. I think getting 100 musical notes will result in an extra life, as is, you know, usually the case in these games. There's like... You know, like a thing, like a coin, you can you can pick up, and if you pick it up and get a hundred, then you get an extra life. That's just how it goes, usually. Oh, I got hit. Now I'm blue. Can I walk through this? No, I can't. Doesn't seem like... Yeah. I missed. I was trying to land on that platform. Trying to hot dog and showboat, but it did not work. I 
like how the sound when the bubble bubbled enemies fly away is like the Super Mario World sound when you complete a stage. It's like the exact same sound effect. Oh, jumping up there. Oh, I was about to say jumping up there won't help me, but there is a cloud. Hmm, wing shoes. Oh, I can float down with the wing shoes. can't shoot up, so I can't destroy those. Let's see. Here's the subscreen. I, you know, can't read any of this. But I have the wing shoes and I have the double bubble. Used to have candy, but I used it. And I don't have any musical instruments. Alright, let's go down here and see what we can find. I think below me is just a pit. It's just death. I don't think there's anything down there. Oh, a cave. Let's see what's inside. I got some candy, so I can survive a fall again. Seems like that's all that's here. Well, that might be enough for Do Re Mi Fantasy Mylon's Doki Doki Adventure. It's, it, I like it. It looks nice. has a nice look and sound to it. It's very relaxing. And, you know, it's also maybe a good time to say goodbye because I don't know how to get past this. So that's also a good reason. Uh, yeah, so Mylon having his adventure, trying to rescue his friend. Can he do it? How can he do it? He doesn't... We don't know. Let's see. Can I slide through that wall? I wonder... Let me just, like, do this. Can I get in there? No, I can't. I cannot. What about down here? No. Yeah, so that's probably it. That's probably it for you and me this time around. Still can't do anything there. With the Wii and the games that will be going away once you won't, well, once the Wii Shop goes down, which is in a number of months, but also once you will no longer be able to put any additional funds in your Wii account, which is coming up very soon, coming up later this month. Uh, so four games that we looked at this time, Lit, which is an interesting little horror-themed puzzle game. There was Monsteca Coral, which I'm not really sure what to make of that. I don't really know what to make of that thing. It's interesting, but I don't really know what to say about Monsteca Coral. Uh, there was Blaster Master Overdrive, which I like because I do like Blaster Master. And there is this Do Re Mi Fantasy Mylon's Doki Doki Adventure, a Japanese-only Super Famicom game that got its Western release on the Wii Virtual Console. So, four more games done. And, uh, well, I think that we do have one more video to go because... At that point, after one more video, then we'll have reached the deadline and you will no longer be able to put any more money in the Wii account. So we'll say goodbye at that point. But we do have that one more video to go. So I'll be back next time with probably the last of these Wii videos. I'll see you around for that. <laughs>